There's a rich history of British cars in Australia, with some being manufactured there. The British Motor Corporation or BMC were assembling cars as early as the 1950s. By 1969, BMC had been folded into British Leyland, so the Australian division became Leyland Motor Corporation of Australia, going on to produce their own car, the ill-fated Leyland P76. The failure of the P76 and British Leyland's bankruptcy in 1975 took a heavy toll on the company, and small-scale subsidiaries like the Australian division were severely curtailed, especially as Australian tariffs were making importing cars much harder. Leyland of Australia lost the ability to build its own cars, having to work with external companies to build the Mini and Land Rover from imported parts and they didn't have exclusive rights to assemble all British Leyland cars down under, with the New Zealand Motor Corporation assembling cars such as the Princess and Jaguar XJ in the 1970s. But they did manage to secure a deal to assemble another car, the Peugeot 505. Back in the UK, British Leyland were also just about scraping by after a government bailout. They saw a strategic partnership with another car company as their only way to survive, so in 1978 struck a deal with Honda. The first fruits of this relationship would be the Triumph Acclaim, a rebadged Honda Ballade that would be produced in Oxford. Leyland of Australia saw an opportunity in the partnership. They'd been selling Rovers in Australia for years, the latest being the futuristic Rover SD1. Maybe Leyland of Australia, or Jaguar Rover Australia as it was now being known, could expand their lineup of luxury cars with something from Honda's range. They entered negotiations and agreed, with British Leyland's blessing, to import the Honda Quint, a five-door version of the Honda Civic, into Australia and to rebadge it as the Rover Quintet. The Honda Quint was also slated to come to the UK, although it would be sold as the Honda Quintet. Jaguar Rover Australia didn't have much control over the car they'd received from Japan though. It would have Rover badges on the front and back and steering wheel obviously, but they could also choose the car's colours. They used the same colours as the Australian imported Rover SD1s to create at least some sort of a family feel between the two very different cars. The Rover Quintet arrived in showrooms in 1983. With the car using the Rover badge, it had to be well appointed, so it featured a standard tinted electric windows, a digital clock, velour covered seats, which were quite a thing in the late 70s, early 80s, a radio cassette with auto reverse and music search, and a wood trim. Options included air conditioning, an automatic gearbox, and an electric glass sunroof. The 79 horsepower 1.6 litre engine gave a decent 0-60 time of 10.9 seconds if you picked the 5-speed manual, but the automatic was quite a bit slower. But then surely Rovers were more about luxury and not speed. The Quintet sold modestly well, with about 3,000 sold over the two years it was available. Compared to the larger SD1, it could be argued it was the smarter choice, with Honda reliability and quality of construction and many of them are still on the road. In the UK, the Triumph Acclaim had been superseded by another Rover Honda, or Ronda as they're called, the Rover 200 series, again based on the four-door Civic, the Honda Ballard. Jaguar Rover Australia considered importing this version, but it was more cost-effective to simply take the version from Japan, so they sold the new Honda Integra with Rover badges as the Rover 400 series in 1985. The relationship with Honda was getting a little tricky though, with Honda selling their own cars in Australia, including the Honda Integra, so it was agreed to import the three-door as the Honda and the five-door as a Rover. It would eventually be joined by the UK-produced Rover 800, another joint agreement with Honda. But sales of this new version weren't really very good. Just a couple of thousand were sold over four years. Jaguar Rover Australia did consider bringing the new 1989 Rover 200 series from the UK, but they couldn't have been able to sell it for a profit. The company folded in 1993, and the next time a Rover will be seen in Australia was the ill-fated Rover 75 in 2001. If you want to see a video about the ill-fated Rover 75 and all the problems they had with that car, or maybe if you want to see a video about the Rover 200 series, there are links on the right-hand side. Thanks very much to all my patrons that are scrolling up the screen and the ones that aren't, and I'll see you in the next video.